Well, it's extremely positive. Uh, certainly, it's a trend we don't see stopping in the near term. We think it will continue. And it's helping to modernise the production base in the entire region. And that story actually has been going on for, for decades now. Japan helped drive industrialisation in Southeast Asia, and I think it will continue to do so. I think so, absolutely. I think particularly in the case of countries like Indonesia, it offers them a chance to move away from being only commodity producers to being major manufacturers as well. There's a long historical link between the two, but secondly, the Japanese economy has been stagnant for several decades now, and it has a declining population. Southeast Asia has been booming for most of the past few decades, and beyond that, it's forming an ASEAN economic community, which will start in 2015, and that has a population of 617 million consumers, most of which are quite young. So that's a huge growing market for Japanese firms to sell into. I wouldn't call it a match, I think it's more a lubricant. I think it can help keep the parts of the engine turning over or turning quite nicely. I think the Japanese investment can continue to drive some of the cross-border consolidation that we're seeing within industries in ASEAN, which obviously will increase productivity growth. And I think it's a key factor in it. But by itself alone, it, it can't complete the process. The, the governments in ASEAN have to do a lot of the heavy lifting too. Uh, well, the risks uh, depends on the risks for who. You could say that Japan maybe is deindustrializing itself, and I think that some Japanese, Japanese nationalist critics may point in that direction. The risks for ASEAN are actually fairly limited. They're getting high technology plants built and transferring technology to them and creating jobs, so it's all good news for them. Well, I hope it won't go terribly wrong. Uh, positively, I don't think we're seeing hot money flowing in. If we were seeing hot money flowing in from China, from the US, and from Japan, I think we would be running that risk. But what we're talking about here is FDI. We're talking about companies actually building factories, employing people, making goods, and uh, producing services. And that's a, that's a real flow of cash into a real asset, which is only a long-run positive for the economy, rather than someone shifting in a billion dollars and then changing their mind the next week and shifting it out again. So I think it's a, it's a happier long-run story for the region. But there is definitely competition uh, between Japan and I think increasingly China in the future for who will get to effectively draw Southeast Asia into its supply chain better.